There we go. Goodness. All right, let me start my video. There. Can you hear me? Oh, do what? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Hi. Hello. Are you going to record this session? I am. Um, several of the people that wanted to go through the training, they had either emergencies or um, a super busy day. But I plan on doing them regularly. Um, nice. But um, I thought I'd go ahead and record it and I can send it out to those that signed up. Awesome. Sorry I'm making all this racket. That's okay. I'm just... So is I, it just you and me? Oh, it might be. Yeah. Huh. Well, I want you to see that I actually wrote... I got in my planner. I wrote this. <laughs> what is it? Okay. I have pencils. Sharpen. You know what? Two number two oh, pencils. I lost your audio. Hang on one second. Okay, let me get back to here. You know what? Small steps, right? Baby steps. I have two number two sharpened pencils that are very easily erased. Okay. So I think I'm good. Well, I use um, erasable pens. So did I yeah. smear? Huh? Do they smear? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have to show what kind. Yeah, they don't smear at all. Um, there's a couple brands I like. This one is a mystery. Mm -hmm. I will. I will share the link with you. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, um, how about we dive in since we're recording, and then we can. Okay. And anything that you might not want recorded after. Uh, okay. So what I'll do is I will give the, the general way of using the planner and then we'll get into the specifics for your personality. And I might go ahead and throw the contemplator in, uh, in the helper and the achiever, cause it won't take long. But what I did is on every single uh, planner. So if you go to the week snapshot and the weekly big four, uh, they're a little bit different based on personality. So you'll notice on yours that you have the eat that frog focus. Yes. And so probably what you could put there is that eat that frog focus is during the next week. I will start using my planner on <laughs> at, this day, at this place. <laughs> okay, you got it. But no, I'll get into that. Oh, start. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I'll and I'll show you why that uh, statement's in there. Um, for others, it's just a one thing focus, um, and we'll get into breaking those down uh, for you. And then you've got the big, the little, and the next, and that's in all the planners as well. And then the other stuff over on the side. So the, the big uh, is those things that get you toward that goal. And then anything else that you need to do during the week um, that just has to get done. And then the little are things that it'd be nice if they got done, but if they don't, you know, you're okay. It'll be like a bonus um, if you, if you do get those. And then one of my favorite parts is the next, because I always think of things that I need to do. And so uh -huh. I'll just put them under that next. And that way they're out of my head. And, um, so that part's pretty straightforward. What is different on the motivator planner is down at the bottom. So the socializing with purpose, we'll dive into that, but that's just a way for motivators to boundary their socialization because a lot of, you know, I personalities love to have fun and to visit and be with friends and family uh -huh. and at the expense of their frogs. Okay. And then right. over on the weekly big four, what I do is I take the four and sometimes I don't have four, but I take 
from the big over on the opposite page. And I put those at the very top. Okay. That way I've got that visual and I can be like, okay. And I'll, I'll put them in order of priority or as I think, you know, of them, what is most important uh, or random, it really doesn't matter. But I do have those big four up there. That way I know I want those four things or three things or two things done or progress made during the week. And then I just plan out my time um, in the Monday through the Friday. So the big four tasks, um, all of those go over on the left and the other tasks go on the right. So, um, and it really just depends on your goals. And then of course, in your motivator planner, you have doodle pages and dream pages. Cause I think it's really important um, for motivators to have places where they can just write down their thoughts or their dreams or even draw. I find a lot of um, motivators like to draw and doodle, especially when they're on the phone. But anyway, so that's the snapshot for the week that's in every okay. single planner. Okay. Okay. Now let's dive into specifics. Okay. So let me get to, let's go to the one thing part. Um, what's important to understand on the one thing is like, if you look at your life, what is one thing that you can do right now that will make everything else easier or unnecessary? And the goals can be personal or professional. And on the, the annual big four goals and projects, you'll see where you select personal or professional. And then there's a domain that I put over there of maybe where you want to focus in if it's personal, because most people know professional. So for example, this first quarter, I have a personal goal and it's in the uh, domain of uh, love relationships. And so I wrote out my goal that I want to achieve by, you know, the end of March mm -hmm. and I select the domain and then I write my key motivator and it can be, you know, a pain point. It can be just maybe aspiration, like what you want life to look like if you accomplish that goal. Um, it can be your kids or your family, whatever is that key motivator. And then I always put down two action steps. So for me, for my personal goal, goal, I had an app and a book that I wanted to, to read and to use that I knew would help me fulfill that goal. And uh, so my action step was learn and use my app to read from my book every day. Mm -hmm. And so then what I did is I put the reading up in my morning time with my education uh section because I get up at 5 30 so I have like an hour where I do specific things and so I just added that to that section of education and then my app I use before bed so I put it in my phone um I don't track my appointments or anything in my um, planner because that's not really what it's for it is to help you get your stuff done but it's more to help you overcome those places where you've been stuck or to design your life the way you want and then how will I celebrate? Well, my <laughs> my um, third quarter was I wanted those Bose sunglasses with the speakers mm. um, with prescription lenses. And um, and I've been crushing my goal. So I kind of got a little bit of a head start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's actually my sister's fault. She's like, go ahead and get them. I've got them and we can go for walks. And I'm like, well, isn't the purpose of us going for walks is to actually talk to each other, not listening to our sunglasses. Anyway, so I, I have something tangible. Um, like one is a trip with Mike, uh, another, you know, I might get a facial or whatever. So I always have an award or a reward for accomplishing my goal. And it really, really helps. And it's stuff I love to do. Like one of them is going to be a staycation. Um, and when Southwest ruined my Christmas forever and ever, cause I couldn't see my kids, I enjoyed the staycation. I decided I was not going to work. I was going to be like, I would have been if I was in DC and I had such a blast. I'm like, you know what? That can be a good reward for me. And, um, so whatever you really like, you want to put down there and, and then, um, you'll take that goal. And it will go into your big 
your weekly big four, et cetera. So in my planner, my um, personal goal is always at the top of my list under Monday through Friday. And I always do it first. And then I mark through it and I do everything else. So that's kind of um, a really big part and an important part of that is whatever your quarterly goal is, you want to make sure that that's in big and that's the first thing you do each day when you open your planner, um, if at all possible. Now, sometimes, you know, I'll have my morning time and then I'm immediately in work, but I have arranged it where it's in that morning time. You know what I mean? So some mm -hmm. goals you may not be able to do that, but you definitely want to have it in there. And the other thing too is, let's say you have a goal, but you're not sure if you can get it done every day. That's a hundred percent fine too. Just have that one day or two days where it's in there and I will get my phone out and I'll look at my calendar and be like, okay, you know, this week is cram full. So what I'm going to do is put these things on these specific days when I know I can do them. Mm -hmm. And then anything that's left over on Friday, I just work on Saturday. So, um, but you'll get your system. You'll get where it's like, okay, you know, this is how I work. This is how I function and you'll figure it out. But the principle of that one thing is key and then making sure it's in your week snapshots and big four. And then you'll notice down here where it, it talks about my one thing is you've got the option of quarterly, yearly, and life purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, I always recommend people start out quarterly. Uh, but when I started my business, that was a yearly, you know what I mean? Like I knew it's going to take mm -hmm. me a year. Uh, so that year, my business was top of mind every single day. So it really just depends on um, what length of time you need. And if you don't get it done in a quarter, just carry it over to the next. There's no problem with it. Okay. okay. Any questions so far or thoughts? Okay. So you'll see. So I, I just read that at the bottom <clears throat> that it says, uh, take the one thing and divide it into your annual big four projects. Yeah. So are those, are those the weekly big fours or the weekly big fours will be different? No, it's the annual. So the very next pages, you have four uh -huh. annual big four goals and projects. Yes. Um, so if you have one thing, if you have a one thing goal for the year, you'll divide it over the four. But okay. if yours, for example, is a quarterly, um, mm -hmm. then obviously you wouldn't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then that, and that pretty much like, usually what I'll do is in November before the holidays hit, I'm, I'm thinking about what I want my year to look like and the specific things I want to accomplish. And so I've already kind of got in my mind, I've got some ideas in my notes and it's almost like once you start thinking about it, what happens is it marinates enough to where what you really want to accomplish comes up to the top. And mm -hmm. So usually by the time I sit down to even do this, I've already got it, you know? So I do like to have a little bit of time to ponder it. But the neat thing is these are not date specific. You know, when I first started using mine, I started in the middle of the year. And okay. um, so you don't have to worry about that or being behind or anything. And I find they actually last me a little bit longer. Because um, mm -hmm. some weeks I'm like, well, I didn't get anything done. So I'll just leave that as is. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare, yeah. you know, or, or I'm on vacation or whatever, and I'm not going to, you know, work on it. So, but yeah, those big fours, um, I put them down, I have them in place. And then what's unique to the motivator is the, the page that says, eat your frogs at the top. Uh -huh. And, um, this is the science of the intentional interrupt. And I think I put it in here, but you know, why do some people stick to their goals and some don't? And what they have found, and, and this is something that Coach Greg and I teach in our intensive, is that motivation and discipline are not the source of getting things done. It's desire. And um, desire means of the Father. And so if you think about everything you've ever accomplished, it's because you wanted to. And there's ways to spark desire. Um, you can do it like with vision boards or um, pondering something. So like, for example, you know, when I realized I needed to be an early bird, even though I was a night owl, 
um, I had no desire, but I got uh, Robin Sharma's book, The 5 a.m. Club, and I knew I was supposed to read that book. And so by the time I read it, I already had my date set when I was going to start implementing the book. But the desire from the picture that he created uh, and the things that he taught in his book was so strong that I actually started spontaneously getting up at five. Uh, wow. And I was like, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> April 1st <laughs> is the day you're supposed to start. But I had created such a desire that my body was already starting to take that, that direction because the subconscious, which is where faith resides, uh, is present tense and it's fueled by the data you give it. And mm -hmm. so if you give your subconscious data of, I don't want to, or dread or confusion or procrastination or whatever it is, it can sometimes take a little bit to reprogram it and get it to line up with what you actually want to do. But there might just be some questions and some hows and whys and things that are maybe blocking you. So desire is the start of all um, progress. And then once you have desire, it fuels the motivation. It fuels the discipline. In fact, I learned a lesson last night not to have a protein shake at 9 um, p.m. Mm -hmm. because then you don't sleep. And so when I got up at 530, um, I was definitely tempted to sleep in. I'm like, no, I mean, it's such a part of my life now that it's like, that's stupid. I'm going to get up. Um, I mm -hmm. might be a little dingy but I'm going to get up. <laughs> so with the, the science of um, why do some people do the goals and some don't is, uh, you know, they had the one group where they were just motivated by, you know, statistics on obesity and its effect on health and blah, blah. And they were asked to exercise at least once a day and record it. The second group was given the same talk and then they were also sent home with materials they could read and look over. And then the same directive of, hey, you know, at least once exercise this week and record it. The third group got the talk. They got the materials, but they were told to write down um, what day they would exercise, uh, where at, and for how long. So when they all came back, the first two groups, there wasn't really much difference. But the mm -hmm. third group was at 90 something percent. Wow. And yeah. And the first was like 20 to 30 percent. I think they were like maybe 28 percent. And the other was like 32 percent. So they they called it intentional interrupt. And it's where you put on paper this week at this time on this day, I'm doing this. And so that's why I included it on your um, weekly snapshot and big four because there's usually, especially the eyes in particular, but anybody that struggles with perfectionism, they will put it off. And what I've also found just in personal experience is that when I put it off, I actually have more stress. And then when I do it, I don't feel any stress at all. And not only that, it wasn't as bad and it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. So then I'm mad at myself <laughs> because I've stressed myself out for weeks, months, or years. I mean, I've had years where I've put stuff off and then it's like, why did I do that? That was just ridiculous. So that's why that one is in yours. And you'll see every week, that's where your one thing would go on this day. I'm going to work on this, uh, for this amount of time. And even timing yourself is important. Um, what I like to tell my eyes, especially is that you only need 20 minutes to really focus. So if you set your timer for 20 minutes and you don't look at the, you know, social media or emails or anything like that, you just get in that quiet place and you work on your one thing for 20 minutes, it's incredible how much you'll get done. Um, and, you know, like 1% change every day is 30% change in a month and 365% in a year. So, you know, just little steps equal into huge returns. So 20 minutes is, you know, if that's all you have, but even if like say 10, you'll feel good knowing you put some time and effort into it. And, um, and so that's, that's what I recommend for my eyes, especially. The other thing um, that you'll notice in yours is the one more thing where it goes into um, loving adventure and fun 
social activities and new things. And um, so I always recommend that I daydream. And daydream is, um, and everybody should do it, but daydreaming is like a vacation for your brain. And it's actually what I did. Um, and then I wrote it all out for what my life would look like now. And I'm living it. That was in 2016. And, um, and so, and I've got the letter that I wrote myself right here in front of me because it's all come to pass. And uh, so I just daydreamed, you know, what my house looked like and what I was doing for work and me and Mike's relationship and all of that. And, um, and you don't have to do it daily, but I do think it's good for eyes to just have some um, daydream time or for you, it may be a good family conversation or depth, you know, deep conversation with friends, anything that fuels your energy and fuels your your joy. Uh, so if it's not daydreaming, you know, find something that does that for you and then your people. Um, and I don't know if you would struggle with this. Um, but one thing I have found with eyes is sometimes for whatever reason, they can be so busy helping other people or socializing or wanting to do fun that they're not hearing what those around them need. And, and so I put that in this um, planner. And so if you find that whatever we're talking about does not fit you and you need a helper, let me know and we'll, we'll switch them. But I'll show you a little bit more in that in a second. Hmm. And then the other thing is the three to thrive. So I actually got this from Lance wall now. And so like on my personal goal, it's like, okay, what knowledge do I need? Uh, and so I, I picked my book to give me my knowledge mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, what skills do I need? Well, I needed a tool to help me because my skill that I needed was more internal than external. And um, so I was like, okay, I need this type of skill, but I think I need an app to help me with it. And so that was my answer for that. And then what personality constraints might stop me? Uh, that's really important. And I had to really think about like, okay, what could? And for me, it was vulnerability, you mm. know? Um, and so I was like, okay, that's that's something that Ds don't like. And I need to put that down. And I need to make sure I'm intentional uh, in that area. So that you'll see that three to thrive in front of every quarter. Okay. And so whatever your quarter goal is, you then, okay, what skill do I need? What knowledge do I need? And what my personality might stop me? Okay. Now back to the people and dreams thing. If you keep going at the end of the month, let me get the page up for you. There's a, a monthly check-in right before your next three to thrive. Okay. okay. So this is what we were talking about where um, I have eyes check in every month and put their most important people down. And then any of the, the tasks they've ignored and um, anything that maybe their loved ones have said that they would like, you know, so it's like, um, like couples, if you have a really high eye, you know, they might make promises and they don't ever keep them. Or there's projects around the house have been sitting around for years, you know, and the spouse is like, hey, can we get this done? So <clears throat> it's, it's anything that someone has repetitively shared with you that they would like to have in their relationship with you or they might need from you physically to do, or it's things that you have put off that you want to put down. Um, so it can be your own things or it can be from people. And then I will complete by and have that date. So your froggy tasks that have been ignored over the last month and the date you'll complete them by. And I would actually add those tasks to your big, your big ones. So and there's a place for you to write down um, repetitive issues or any annoyances voiced by those in your life. Um, and if you, you know, have a rough time or 
don't really understand where they're coming from, you know, have that conversation. But, um, you know, compromise solution, kind of like, you know, in the marriage class where it's like some things can't be solved, but you can come to a place where you're able to, you know, have a, a great relationship and still do the things that you need to do as a couple. But anyway, so that's the check-in of hopefully creating a habit and an eye to not avoid things and to pay attention to their surroundings uh, and making sure that they're not dismissing or forgetting or ignoring the things that people are requiring of them or even the things they would like to require of themselves. So that's about it um, on the motivator. So do you have any questions and do you see how this can fit you or the more you're hearing, you're like, hmm, maybe I'm not a motivator. Um. I do pick up things in here that I really, I'm like the frog thing is big for me, mm -hmm. um, procrastinating, but I do think some of mine is going to be more geared to the helper. So I kind of think I'm in between. I know we talked about that when yeah. I was thinking of purchasing the one, but it may be where if there are some things in the helper that I could just add in. That's what I was about to say. We'll go over the helper next and then you can take those um concepts and okay. they are in the training too on the helper and i think i gave um a pdf uh on how to say no or something like that in there too okay. so the the helper is the other people focused personality and so all the concepts are the same exactly the same as the motivator uh as far as big little all that the goals but what is different is I've included in the helper a section on your absolutes. And what this is, is that, uh, and the idea behind it is that helpers help even when it costs them or when it even can sometimes cost their family or their loved ones. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a helper. There's nothing wrong with, um, you know, caring for others. Uh, but not at the expense of your own peace and your family's peace and those that want to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot with helpers. I mean, their hours will be sucked dry helping other people. And I'm sure you guys have experienced that. So mm -hmm. what I tell my helpers is you need three absolutes that you are not willing to budge on. And I, I use this principle for myself. Um, and so my, my three absolutes are my, um, God time, uh, coffee with Mike every day at five and then gym time. And so they're, for, they're for me, like something I will not budge. And so if I look at my schedule and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm not gonna be able to hit the gym this day. So I'll make sure I go that day. I'll put it in my calendar. Or if I look and, and it's like, okay, Mike, you know, the city meeting is this Thursday, so go ahead and have your coffee. Well, that's very rare. You know, usually we have it together. Um, if I have my schedule that's too busy and I'm finding that my Jesus time is uh, being sacrificed, I'll hire a personal assistant, which I just did. It's like, I, I'm not going to sacrifice those three things. So they're like your fence fencing. And uh, mm -hmm. so with helpers, it's like, okay, what are the three absolutes that Unless there's an absolute emergency, I'm just not going to budge on. And you might even ask, you know, your hubby, what, what is something that you would like from me um, that I can put as an absolute? Uh, and you may already have them actually, um, but that's very, very helpful uh, with, with helpers because then they're like, okay, you know, and uh, I mean, I've even had where I'll be on the phone and I'm, you know, maybe ministering to someone and it's, it's time. I mean, I love ministering to you, but I'm sorry. Uh, I got to get to the gym, you know, or I, I need to have my Jesus time. In fact, I tell all my clients, don't call me at four. You won't get an answer. I mean, you're welcome to leave a message, but I will not answer my phone, <laughs> you know? And uh, so it helps me in making decisions and really eliminating the tyranny of the shoulds or the tyranny of all the obligations that people try to put on me. It's like, that's not my obligation. Now, if Holy Spirit says you're my assignment, absolutely. But other than that, sorry, I have my three absolutes, you know? So that's really helpful. 
Um, and then the other thing that I have for the helpers is their self-talk and their me time. Um, one thing that I, I found with um, helpers in particular in their thought life is they can be very negative toward themselves, very critical. Um, they can also feel powerless. And then also they will take on the emotional energy that the people that they're trying to help have. And so their problems then become the helper's problems. And that's actually codependency, but it's just something that helpers tend to do. And so um, I've got check-ins for the helper, which we'll look at in a second, on the self-talk. You know, how was it this week? Um, was it more negative than positive? So that's really important. And then the me time kind of goes back to the absolutes and the saying no, because saying no is self-care, especially for a helper. Um, so the me time is like, okay, what are your favorite activities? And that's one of the exercises in their planner is write like three to five activities that you absolutely love to do and then incorporate them in some small measure, at least once a week. Um, you know, like for me, I love to read. And so I always have reading in my day. It's rare that I don't get to, um, for others, it may be a walk or it may be lunch with a friend. Uh, but whatever those favorite activities are, um, that's something where you can then use that to schedule your me time. Like my massages, my facials, those are me time. Um, and then what you might add to your weekly, um, like when you're done with your week, maybe in, on the other is the weekly check-in. So for a helper, it's like, okay, the first question is, did you protect your absolutes? you know, yes or no. Um, did you schedule and enjoy me time? Yes or no. Um, and then on the self-talk, the question is, was it more positive or negative? And if it's negative, what I instruct people to do is to, what was <clears throat> the most dominant negative thought? Like what was that one thing that was like a fly that kept buzzing around your head? Um, because it's important to know, okay, where has my mind been? And then a challenging thought for its place, which I will usually say out loud. So for example, um, with like every once in a while, I'll feel anxious and I'm very intentional. I'm like, okay, why am I feeling anxious right now? Because there's no reason. And my brain is associating something right now with something that's been traumatic. So two examples, one was um, almost a year ago was when I started getting up at five, uh, five to five 30, it was dark. And the first morning it was no big deal, but I, I had anxiety all day. And then the next morning, I remember I walked into my living room and I just stopped dead in my tracks with this overwhelming sadness and dread. And I was like, okay, Lord, what is this? And he said, the last time you were up at night is when you were sick and you couldn't sleep. And so your brain's like, what are we doing? Is something wrong? And he said, so you need to tell your brain, this is not that. I'm like, okay. And so that's what I did. This is not that with, you know, with intention and with firmness. And so what happened is not only did it get rid of that for the mornings, but then he pointed out to me, that I had been anxious every night for 10 years before I'd go to sleep. Oh. I would have anxiety and I never stopped to question why, like it became so normal and I never connected it to not being able to go to sleep for days. So that was huge for me. Um, just this week I was getting the dragon main, you know, photos from last year on the website and my heart rate shot through the roof. And I'm feeling really anxious and I'm like, okay, Lord, what's happening? And he said, well, that was a week your dad got sick. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh yes. So then out loud, this is not that, you know, and it immediately took care of it, but our brain will just automatically, cause it's only job is to keep you alive. 
So whatever is the dominant negative thought, get that truth that's in opposition to it and get your phrase. It's really, really helpful. Um, One of my other phrases is like, you know, with the news and everything that's going on, I realized I was angry, um, not because I thought I was angry because people were lying and they're trying to destroy our country. Um, When I was in prayer one day, the Lord said, no, you're actually angry because they're threatening your way of life, or at least you think so. Mm -hmm. And that's fear. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, so you're actually mad because you're in fear. And I said, well, what's my statement? And he said, I choose wisdom over fear. And I Mm -hmm. only had to do that like for two weeks. And that was taken care of. So it's very beneficial. And then the other question is um yes or no on said no more and yes less and so if people really struggle with saying no like maybe they're afraid someone will be mad at them or they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or whatever I do ask them to write that dominant thought of like why did you say yes when you really didn't want to or you knew that it was going to cause you know stress Now, obviously, if you're feeling like you need to minister to someone that can be different, but even then, you know, it's like, I need to make sure that I'm supposed to. And then the final question is, did saying yes cost you in return? Because one thing people don't understand is whatever you say yes to, you have to say no to something. Mm -hmm. And so what did it cost you? Or was there a return on your investment? So those are the, the helper ones. And um, that's the weekly check-in questions for them. So I think you can just incorporate those with your motivator um, planner for sure. Okay. And then the only other things would be for the contemplators, which would be the C personalities. um, They have the exact same process. But what I do is I have for them calculated social engineering So it's like, you need to be around people. And so with the contemplators, it's like, okay, what do you enjoy doing? What topics do you like to discuss? And then who, uh, who interests you? You know, who is someone that you could see yourself even once a month sitting down, having coffee with and discussing, you know, fun things or, you know, exploring or hiking or whatever, but have at least some type of um, uh, social activity. And it, and again, it can even be just once a month because they can really isolate themselves. And there's such a richness that comes from, you know, being around others that if they're not careful, they'll miss. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that I have for them And I think it's every, oh no, they're in the back. So there's worksheets called when you're stuck because with C's, they can get stuck in a data loop and they, they won't pull the trigger. And so I have a worksheet where it's like, okay, what decision do you need to make? And then you list the pluses. If you say yes to that decision, the minuses, if you say yes to that decision, and then on a scale of uh, one to 10, how much risk is involved? Because risk is relative. You know, for some people, there's no risk at all, where the same thing for another person, the risk can be off the charts for them. So I have them assess, okay, how much risk will be involved if you make this decision? And then what will it cost you if you say no? So it's kind of like, okay, just they're evaluating the whole thing on the pluses, the minuses, the risk. Um, And then the final is how will your life look if you say yes? So that way they can be like, okay, well, if I say no to this, my life actually is not going to get better. I I feel like I'll go backwards, you know, or whatever it is. So I have those worksheets at the end of the contemplator. And I always recommend, you know, um, make copies, you know, if they need to, because Um, Sometimes it can be really, really hard for C's to get out of that, that data loop. So that's the only um, difference with them. And then the um, achiever, the only thing that I have in there um, is uh, the happiness recipe. So for an achiever, they have to schedule fun. 
They had to schedule recreation or recreation. Um, and you know, it was funny with each planner. I was like, Lord, what should I have for each personality? And it's like, he literally would be like, okay, for this one, they need help with decisions for this one. They need help to say no. Well, for the achiever, you know, me being one of those, I was like, you know, what helped me the most was learning to have recreation and I schedule it in and I love it now. And so, um, I have where it's like your quarterly happiness recipe, you know, like, what are you going to do for that quarter that it's either every day, every week, every month, something that is fun for you. And, um, so for me, it's daily. I love reading true crime. Um, Mm -hmm but I usually have something quarterly planned too, like a trip or with Mike or something like that. Um, But the happiness recipe, and I go into the things that make for happiness, you know, being expert in your skill, uh, learning new things and creating awe, which is the cheapest, you know, going for a walk with nature surrounding you or, you know, whatever that is, that equals happiness. And so they have like little smiley faces at the end of each day where they have to check mark it because we like to check mark, um, but they have to mark it if they've done it. And uh, I I used mine faithfully. I marked every single day um, and it really motivated me to make sure I had that daily happiness. Um, I was pretty good at the weekly, uh, but now it's just built in. I don't even need to check mark my stuff anymore. So that's the only that difference, but I think with the helper things, you can incorporate what you think that you need into that. And some people ask me why well, I don't have Saturday and Sunday. Um, to me, it's the week. And a lot of people that do these are either professionals or they do most of their stuff in the week and the weekends are for relaxing. Um, but again, you can definitely carry over whatever you don't accomplish to either the next week or the weekend. But I would put a caution for the achievers that make sure you have that day scheduled to relax and to rest um, just for innovation, creativity, all of that. There's so many benefits because we like work. Work is fun for us. And if we're not careful, that's the only fun we have. So that's the only caution I put for the D's or the achievers is make sure you're not, you know, having seven day work weeks. That's really important. And C's can maybe get into that pattern as well because they're task focused. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So you have some questions or thoughts that can help you with. I can't think of any off the top of my head. So is there like one burning thing that you've really wanted to tackle or... Do you need help figuring out what it is? I think I know I, there is one thing that I want to tackle and I just think planning out a step-by-step process on how to do that and scheduling my time to do it right now, it's very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for me, it's something that I uh, started in 2020 and that was digging into all my ancestry genealogy. I've got, boxes of pictures of family members from way back black and white pictures so I brought it with me when I moved so it's Mm -hmm. all just like in a drawer and um so just coming up with an organizational plan of tackling that is is something that's on my these are things I I wish to do this year yeah um that I'm planning for so that's kind of my um one of my things and that could be like even just the first quarter could be broken down to just getting things organized. Right. Um, like with my dad's stuff um, in my cabinet over here, I have letters. My grandmother wrote to him in the Marine Corps. I've got um, pictures, you know, that I want to scan in and then get the family members, you know, their originals and, um, and all that. And, um, but, you know, the idea of having to do that. And I don't want to tip the scale uh, of being sad. Right. So Uh it's like, um, but what I've done is, uh, and I, and I just give myself grace. I just put on my next dad's stuff. And uh, so when I get back from Texas um, toward the end of February, it's like, okay, I'm going to put that in my daily task or I'm going to put it down like maybe twice 
and my time limit's going to be 20 minutes. And the first thing I'm going to do is just organize the letters by date, you know, and then right. organize the picture, pictures by family. <laughs> and I'm just going to take my time. I'm not going to worry about rushing through it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and if I feel overwhelmed or I feel like this is making me extremely sad, then I'm going to shut the door and just walk away until I'm done. So for me, there's an emotional energy that if I'm not careful, will make me avoid it. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I, I put it in my, my next. And, uh, and so I pretty much got my plan on when I'm going to start it. Um, but there are also seasons where like, I feel like I've had my entire month this week. I mean, it's just been insane and like, um, really frustrating. Actually, I don't like being this busy. Um, but I give myself grace for that where, okay, I may want to have wanted to have tackled this and it's on my big, it's, or maybe it's even one of my littles, but you know what you just, there's times where you just can't help it. So right. I think if you decide maybe what task and how much time those could be your two action steps. I really like that because the time thing, giving myself a timer, um, I work really well with that. Me too. And so I didn't think of giving myself a timer with this big of a project. Yeah. So my, my fear in tackling the project or even getting started was that I'm going to get started. I'm going to spread things out everywhere. I'm going to get off on a tangent, finding some new information, and then I'm going to be in here for days yeah. Um, and not have a, you know, not have a starting and an ending for that day. And yeah. so I think that that's helpful to just tell myself that I have a time limit. I am um, being a D if I got on a, a project, whether it was a website or a house project or whatever, I would be yeah. so hyper-focused, um, that I could almost make myself sick. And I still tend to be that a little bit with websites. Like once I get in that zone, I don't want to be interrupted. Um, but like when we had to go through dad's house, well, both of them, uh, me and Kent just were like, okay, we're going to work until, you know, this time. And then we're going to go to the gym or we're going to watch a movie. And then after he left, and then I had to go through all the boxes, um, Saturdays were my day. And so on Saturdays around two, I would go and work for like one to two hours. And I, I literally set my timer. And once that timer went off, I left. And, uh, and I, I had to do that years ago because I'd get so obsessive that I'd have to have a timer to shock me out of whatever I was doing. But it's, and it takes the, the load off the weight. Yeah. And it's, yeah, you know, I don't have to finish control. It. Yeah. I don't have to finish it all in one day because I would get to that point where I was staying up all night because I'd think, well, I just need to do a little bit more. And so, and then I can go to bed, but it was never, <laughs> it was yeah. not, there was never an end. Yeah. And thinking about it in a way of the journey and the process and savoring what you're doing and the history and the people you're going to get to know better, you know, you don't want to rush through it. It's like, you know, a gourmet meal. You know, you don't right. want to hurry. Um, and so taking pleasure in that process, I think will be very help, help, helpful, like savoring um, the journey. Because, you know, when you go through that journey, you're only going to go through it once. And right. uh, so I, I think there's going to be a lot of blessings versus trying to rush just to get it done. Like to me, that's a task that, you know, even if it's you have your coffee and you have, you know, your music playing and just, you know, and that's what I plan on doing. I requested a record player for Christmas from mm. my mother because all those records behind me were my dad's. Oh, I love that. So I want to just listen to his music and read the letters. Uh, so, you know, anything that makes it feel like a special event um, or a special time, I think will be helpful too. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, I think that's that's all. Let me look at real quick through the front. Okay. Um, so in summary, my annual big four goals, I am I can have four different ones or I can have one per quarter. Um, and write those down. And then I break those up into um, 
and I have the action steps and then I break those up into the weekly, weekly big four. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can have the year goal and then you break that year down into quarters, you know, so like if we take your project, the first quarter can be getting organized, um, kind of getting your game plan. And then the second quarter can be, you know, research. Um, the third quarter can be, you know, scanning in things or uh, storing them away nice or whatever it is. So if you have something that you know is going to take you a year, you can just divide that up, whether it's one quarter, two quarters or four, or you can have four separate goals for the year um, that you would put you know, where it says annual, well, just the quarter one goal, what you want that to look like. So last year, all of my year was for my planners. And so every quarter I, I broke down what I needed to have done that quarter. Um, this year it's different. My first quarter is a, a personal goal. The second one is a business idea I have. Um, the third one is a, a true crime dream I've wanted to do for a long time. And I can't remember what my fourth one is. It's in my phone, uh, in my planner. Well, it's right here. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, but I now this year I've got different for each quarter. Okay. If that makes sense. So mm -hmm. yeah, break down the year, break down the six months or have a different one for each quarter. And then break that down into the week. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And always tackle if in any way possible that one thing first, or at least have it written down the time that you will tackle it. Uh, that way, if maybe you can't get to your organization until say like 10 or two or something like that. At least you have it in there and even your phone. And then, you know, okay, this is time to go work on that for about 20 minutes or however long you want. Okay. 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 Right. Let me. Lots of good info. 